Hello, welcome back to my channel. I hate my intros. <laughs> so what I've done here, uh, you guys have seen me make some royal mandalas or mandalas before. Um, I'm just doing a new set and I thought that I would share them with you because why not? Why not share with you what I'm painting? what I'm doing. Uh, these are going or in my Etsy shop already, um, as well as another set. So what I've done is I've done a base coat of white on a couple of flatter roundish stones. They're not perfect, but they're beautiful um, just the way they are. And I've picked a couple of different colors that I'm going to work on here. This one's magenta and some coral. Um, I will list the paint colors in the description of the video below. Uh, so just look below the video there. Three little dots or a little down arrow, click that and it'll bring you into the description and it'll show you all the stuff that I've used in the video. Now I'm using pure pumpkin and you can see I'm using like a sponge dauber, which is like a little plastic stick with a little sponge on the end of it. And this just helps blend the colors in. So I'm using sponges with each one. Uh, I use a different sponge with each color because you don't want to muddy them up. So make sure you rinse your sponges before the paint dries on them. I usually throw them in a bottle of water. I keep a bottle of water at my desk to throw them into so the paint doesn't dry on them and ruin them. Uh, and then I just go rinse them out with uh, sometimes just dish soap. And yeah, there you go. So I've got orange, pink, and like a peachish coral color for that one and I'm gonna let it dry. This one I'm using uh, darker colors, so like a cerulean blue and I'm gonna use some teal and I'm gonna use some purple. I might even add a little bit of a lighter blue in there but we'll see. I usually start with the darker color around the base and that's the same color that I'm gonna paint the bottom as well. So if you're wondering, the bottom is going to be the darkest color um, that I use. So, yeah. So this one is going to go on same way, using different sponges for different colors so that you don't, uh, muddy the paint up and change the color at all, unless you want to. Um, like if you're using two different shades of blue, but you don't plan on going back to the darker blue, you can probably get away with using the same sponge. But I usually don't like to mix them just because I've made a lot of messes in the past. <laughs> just a little tip from me. I have missed you guys. I'm glad I'm back again. I know you guys might get bored of these little mandalas that I make, but um, I'm just giving you some inspiration it might not even be a rock that you paint this on. It might be a canvas or who knows? You tell me. Let me know in the description what you think of all of these royal mandalas that I have. Have you checked out the other ones in my uh, video list? I think I have like 284 videos. So there's a few mandalas in there. So that one's done. I'm letting it dry. I'm going to use a little bit of green and some light um, like aqua, I think maybe, or even teal, I'm not sure. Uh, and then some purple and it's going to be like a violet uh, pansy purple. So lime green, aqua, violet pansy, and the violet pansy is the darker color, believe it or not. Um, or so I think anyway, I suppose you could have used the blue, but I like green, um, mingling in with blue way better than green mingling in with purple. It doesn't look very nice. So yeah, and you can see I'm, I'm going to have to put another little bit of green on top of there. Make sure everything's covered up. Make sure it's all blended in and uh, make sure you're blending while the paint's still wet. It's And you can go back and forth between the two colors um, to make sure it blends nicely. I have lots of blending with sponges, uh, tutorials, lots and lots and lots. So now Violet Pansy, it does look a lot darker than that blue, so I'm glad I chose that for the bottom. Uh, and I'm doing the same thing, same thing, just blending it in, making like a soft transition from the blue to the purple. Same with the soft transition from the green to the blue. And uh, yeah, that's how I do it. Then I let it dry. And then you can add glitter if you want. If you don't, that's fine. Uh, sometimes I just use like nail powder that's like chrome powder and I just dust it on there and then I resin it. But this time I'm going to use 
uh, Yuli watercolors. This is the um, mini master pan and it's all color shifting watercolors. So I'm just kind of picking similar colors to the paint that I've used. Um, and I'm just going with the flow and seeing how it looks. Once this dries, this glitter is not going to run down the sides of the rock, but if it does, it doesn't matter because there's going to be glitter everywhere anyway. So it looks kind of dark in that area, but it's, it's actually not, it, it looks like a bright pink when you shift it. Um, and it looks really nice on that magenta. Same thing with each rock. I'm just going to kind of pick colors that resemble don't use too much water because then it's just going to like stream down the side of your rock. Um, I don't like to use water inside of my water brush. I keep it empty and I just use a little lid with some water in it and I just dip it lightly. Uh, for painting rocks, you don't want to max out the, the water. <laughs> you want to keep less water and more pigment from your paint on the stone. So... Another little tip from me for free. <laughs> so I'm just mingling on that glitter. Now I'm going to do this when the bottom is still really kind of wet. So I'm, I just stuck it on a piece of paper for now. But I'm going in with some goldish green. And I'm going to put a little bit of blue and a little bit of purple. And, uh, and then I'm going to resin them. Because I don't want to wreck the background in any way when we paint our mandalas on it. So if you're daring, just don't resin it yet and start painting your mandala right away. Um, but me, I make mistakes and I like to take my time with my with my gold on, on my mandalas. So um, I like to resin them. I've put like a very fine coat. You can see some of it's not completely covered. It might look a little bumpy. Um, I literally used like my leftover resin when I was resining a bunch of other, a uh, bunch of other rocks. So this was just what I had left over, gave them a real thin coat, just soaked it on like a little bar of soap, let them dry. And now this has been a couple days later. See, you can tell that there, I didn't completely cover some of the areas on the rock, but that's okay. I'm not going to wreck the background with the amount of resin that I have on it. We're going to keep that background just the way it is. And it looks fabulous. You can see that glitter now. It looks amazing. So find the center of each one of your stones. Just kind of eye it up. I'm not measuring anything out. I'm just taking a look and seeing what I think. And then I'm going to do the same design on all three stones. But I'm only going to show you the design on this one. And that's because you would be bored if I showed you all three times the exact same design, right? So I'm just going to show you this and I'm, I assure you, I'm doing the same thing on the other two rocks as well. And I'll show them to you at the end. So I've got a big gold dot in the center and then I went top, bottom, left, right, and then in the center of all of those with a small dot. And now I'm going in between those dots with a little bit of a bigger dot. So you can kind of see the size of, like it, it depends on the amount of paint you use, right? Or what size dotting tool you're using. If you don't have a dotting tool, you can use a toothpick. You can use the ends of uh, paint brushes, um, old pens that don't work anymore. You can just dot away with it, um, but different things around your house. Um, now I'm doing little uh, triangles off of those big dots. So there's eight of those. And now I'm putting a bigger dot using a bigger dotting tool at the end of those, those pointy triangles. And I'm going to bring a dot down in between those as well. Now I'm going to walk the dots. So I'm just taking a small dotting tool and I'm stealing a chunk of paint from the big dot there. And I'm just walking from the center up the left and then up the right. And you can see I'm just stealing the paint right from those bigger dots that they're not, they don't mind. They like sharing. So you're allowed to do that too. <laughs> it's a pain going back and forth to the paint pan if you don't need to, right? <laughs> so where your biggest dot is below that, uh, I put another dot. 
And now I'm going to do like a wishbone. And it's kind of going, I, I'm trying to keep them all the same size. I'm just eyeing it up. You can see I'm not using any tools. I'm just winging it. Um, and I'm just wishboning each Wishboning does not sound right. <laughs> I'm not going to say that again. I am putting wishbones. And then at the pointy part of the wishbone, I'm going to soften it up with a little dot again. We're going to use those dots as a guide to do, I guess, kind of like a rounded, a rounded um, triangle again, or a V. It's kind of like a rounded V. And I, I will call them petals because we're actually going to pinstripe these and I'm going to call them petals, okay, if that's okay with you. See how I've made a mistake and I just literally wipe off the paint with my thumb? That's resin. I love you, resin. <laughs> I only use art resin and I've never had any problems with it yellowing or cracking. Um, but when it's out... In the sun, your paint will fade. Um, so a lot of my rocks are indoor rocks anyway, but yeah. So now I'm pinstriping, like I said. I start at the center and then uh, two sides. And then I go in between those ones. And it's okay, you can actually take a Q-tip like I did. You can wet it down just a little bit and you can wipe off areas where you went too far or you made a mistake with your gold if your fingers too big just use a little q-tip um, or you can use like a makeup eye makeup um, sponge those are little too you can get them a little bit wet and then kind of just rub off any mistakes that you make and that's only when you're uh, working on top of resin so remember that it just makes things a little bit easier so I'm using a very 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 small uh, dotting tool which is called a dotting needle but you can do the same effect with a toothpick uh, and I'm just dragging down walking the dots just a little bit like five or six um, dots and I'll show you that in just a second so I'm just walking them down bigger dot uh, just underneath in between the petals and I just walk it down maybe there's like seven seven dots just walk until the dots get smaller. That's when your your paint is running out. Your dots just automatically get smaller. And it's just giving a little finished touch to, it kind of looks like a flower, right? Kind of resembles a flower with petals that are pinstriped. I don't know. You let me know. <laughs> this is going to look beautiful. I'm going to show you how it looks on all three of them. Uh, doing the same thing, like I said, but I'm not going to bore you. And I'm just going to resin them, let them dry overnight so that I can show you and handle them because they're so shiny and beautiful. <laughs> um, and I'm going to put my signature on the bottom as well. There, There's this one that you watched me create. I'm excited to show you the other ones because they look beautiful as well. And I did the exact same design. It's not perfect. Look at all that glitter. It looks fabulous. Ah, makes me so happy. I created mandalas for my wedding. Uh, each person who was at my wedding received a handmade royal mandala from me. Yeah, that was a lot of work. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. And I still have mine. And my husband still has his. So that's pretty cool. Aren't these beautiful? That's the second one that I was just starting, but I didn't bore you with to do the same exact design. Very, very same exact. They're not perfect, like I said, um, but you can tell they're the same design, right? You can tell. Look at the colors on that and the glitter just looks so beautiful. I must say, these are nice to hold in my hand. They're so shiny and soft and soothing and the colors are just beautiful you can do these in whatever colors you want guys let me know what you think let me know if you're going to create some 
They look beautiful uh, in amongst your plants or uh, sitting on a table or in a basket uh, out for display. Um, I had a lot of fun making them and, and having a little bit of time with you guys. I love you guys so much. I would love some ideas for Christmas, for November and December, please put your ideas in the comments below and I'm going to start writing them down and uh, you'll see me again soon. I love you. Keep painting.